Well, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are once again um, talking about intermediate or, I'm sorry, uh, financial accounting. At this time, uh, we're moving on to advanced accounting concepts. And the first concept that we're going to be discussing is going to be the equity method of accounting for investments. So back in intermediate accounting, we discussed, I think it was chapter 12 of your textbook at that time, we talked about our fair value uh, method. Uh, so you may want to revisit that uh, before we get started on the equity method. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at that again. Uh, just you know to review those concepts so just to make clear when we're talking about investments we're talking about an asset and that asset could be current or long term on the balance sheet uh, so investments are going to have financial statement effect on the balance sheet the income statement statement of cash flows and statement of stockholders equity pretty much all of the uh, financial statements So our first learning objective is going to be to describe the various methods of accounting in terms of uh, investments. So uh, our general accepted accounting principles uh, recognizes four methods. Uh, we have the fair value method, we have the cost method, uh, consolidation, and equity method. So it depends how do we decide which method to use? It would depend on our ownership in that other company. So we have a corporation who has stock in another corporation. And so how much uh, or how many shares in that other corporation do we hold? What is our ownership percentage? And then depending on that, we decide which method will be uh, most adequate for um, you know, the levels of influence or control that we have over the other corporation. So we basically have uh, three tiers. Um, and you know these uh, percentages are sort of subjective. Uh, we're going to go into other um, intricacies that relate to each tier. And that's probably the one that we need to take uh, attention or pay at more uh, close attention to. So the first tier is for if we have ownership in another corporation and we own less than 20% in that other corporation. Uh, if that's the case, then we will use the fair value method or the cost method if the fair value is um, undetermined. The next tier is 20 to 50 percent. And at this level, we're assuming that we're able to exercise significant influence over the other corporation. And we're going to define what significant influence means later. Uh, and in that case, our method would be, we can use, we can still use the fair value method, uh, but can, we can also use the equity method. And then if our um, ownership percentage is greater than 50%, so at this level, we're assuming that we're able to exercise control over the other corporation. And in that case, the two corporations are treated as one and we are required to consolidate our financial statements. Okay, so fair value method again, uh, this is the less than 20%. Okay, so we have equity securities. We own less than 20% on the other corporation. We cannot significantly um, affect the other corporation's operations. So we have no saying on what they're doing, in other words. Uh, and so we have to, we are adjusting our balance sheet, our investments on the balance sheet based on the fair uh, market value of those securities, whether they are appreciating in value or they're depreciating in value at the end of the year or when we issue our balance sheet. Uh, so our initial investment is going to be reported at cost 
And then, as we said, we're going to make adjustments depending on the fair value of those shares. Uh, if we're not able to determine what the fair value of those shares are, because maybe there's not a uh, price quote in the market, uh, maybe this is a closely held company that does not have a uh, fair value, then we're just going to uh, report it at cost. And then the dividends are recognized as income. Any changes in fair value will also be recorded as income. And if you recall, back in Intermediate Accounting 1, uh, we talked about uh, if there were trading securities or available for sale. And if it, they were available for sale, these unrealized gains and losses would be reported uh, on the uh, comprehensive income. Uh, well, that's no longer after the accounting standard update number 2016. Uh, so now you don't have to worry about making that difference between these two. Trading or available for sale, unrealized gains and losses will be reported on the income statement. Uh, now, we also need to pay, pay attention to the value of these uh, shares. So if the value decreases significantly and, um, you know, to the point that is less than the carrying amount, carrying amount meaning the amount that we have on the balance sheet, and we expect that now these differences or drops in value could be uh, just temporary, um, you know, if we look at the economic uh, situation right now for most places, um, you know, we're going to have or expect a dip in value of some of shares because of, you know, COVID situations and things like that. Uh, so, but we you know we expect that it's going to hopefully uh, increase in value once the economy uh, keeps, uh, you know, gets going. Uh, but if it's something that's going to be permanent, for example, I don't know, some company that uh, is actually, you know, is pretty much not going to be doing very well in any time soon, and therefore if we determine that that drop in value is permanent, then that we will have to recognize an impairment. Okay, so now we get to the start of this presentation, which is the equity method. And we said equity method is for ownership between 20 and 50%. Remember, these percentages are subjective. What we're looking at actually is do we exercise significant influence um, over the other corporation? If we exercise significant influence, even if we own, I don't know, 6%, and the other corporation, but through contracts, we exercise significant influence, we are required uh, to use the equity method. Uh, if we our ownership percentage exceeds the 50%, then we are going, uh, we're considered as one entity and we are required to consolidate our financial statements. And we're gonna talk about that extensively chapters two through six uh, of this course. Uh, this brings us to the variable interest entity, also known as a special purpose entity uh, under ASC 810-10-05. Uh, so this is what I was talking about before, that even if we own a, a small percentage in another company, when we have a contract with the other company where that allows us to exercise significant influence or control the other company, then we have to see if we have to use the equity method or even have to consolidate our uh, financial statements. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this in chapter six, but this is just an overview of uh, investments. And the last slide, I uh, just want to bring your attention. This is Enron, and you know, you know, many times you hear Enron in, in a lot of your classes, different topics, ethics, especially. Uh, but we can see here that relationship can be very complex. 
uh, and you can see the percentage ownership percentages that are indicated and even if it has you know 0.1 percent in some instances depending on the contracts that are existing between those two entities then uh, you know we will we will have to uh, consolidate or uh, use uh, different accounting methods uh, based on you know the, the degree of influence and control so just keep that in mind um, as you go through this chapter